Today we're looking at how to combine the power of React with the precision of TypeScript. Along the way, we'll explore some advanced TypeScript features that will make your life easier and help you level up your coding skills. We'll see how to define functional components, how to manage props, and how to add types to the most useful hooks. But you know me, I'm not just about how we do things, but also about why. So first we need to take a detour to explain a specific advanced TypeScript feature. It's used in almost all the types we're going to be setting up in React. Have you guessed what it is? I'll give you a clue. It uses the angle brackets. That feature is called generics. Generics are like templates for types. Let's look at this example. We have a function called get first example. It returns the first item of an array. We'll set aside the question of empty arrays for now. What type of value does this function return? As things stand, TypeScript can't tell. But we can help it. We can write the function like this with a type parameter, t, which is a generic, a placeholder, like a parameter, but for types. Our function is now get first item of type t, which takes an array of type t and returns a value of type t. This allows us to have a function that can manage any array, but is still type safe. And we use it by specifying the type get first item of number, get first item of string, and so on. Now, how do we use this in React? Well, let's start with functional components. To define functional components, we use the react.fc type, which is short for React Function Component. This tells TypeScript that this function needs to return valid React content and can have a children props. But how do we specify the types of additional props? Well, that's where generics come in. We define an interface for the props and we add it to the type definition as a generic. Let's go through a simple example with a button. Here we have the button props that specify all the props types for this button component. If we add this interface as a generic to the React FC type declaration, we've provided all the information that React and TypeScript need. Now let's see how this works with hooks. UState is the most commonly used hook, and here we use generics, this time on the UState hook itself to specify the states type. This allows us to specify the types for the state and set state return values. So here, for example, we know that count is a number and that set count takes a number as a parameter, either directly or via function. The next hook is easy. Use effect only generates side effects. So there's nothing returned that would need to be typed. There's nothing to do. For use context, we specify the generic in the call to create context. Even though TypeScript might be able to infer the type from the initial object, it's better to be safe. UseRef follows exactly the same principles as useState. We specify the type of object that useRef will hold a reference to. So far, this has been easy sailing. With UserReducer, things get slightly more spicy. The UserReducer hook allows you to manage more complex state and side effects. This means there's more to specify in TypeScript. We need to specify the interface that our initial objects need to follow and we need to specify the shape of the actions that can be sent to the reducer. For example, our action is an object and the type field it contains can either be worth increment or decrement. This basic example could have been managed with a simple use state, but the whole point of use reducer is to manage more complex states and interactions. So let's beef this up a bit. Let's imagine that we're managing the state of a game. Instead of a counter, we have a score and we're also tracking a game state. This can take several values depending on whether the game is won or lost or in progress or not even started. Our game object now looks like this. So what actions would we like to carry out on it? Well we can of course increase or decrease the score maybe by a given amount and we want to set the game state. So we have one action to change the score by a certain amount and another to change the game state. Both actions should have a common action type field. However, the first action interface has a score field that is a number. The second has a game state field with a limited range of values. And our action type is simply a union of the different types. Now, how can we use TypeScript when our action objects are very different? Well, this is the perfect use case for an advanced TypeScript feature called TypeGuard and Inference. In the reducer, we use the action type field in the condition. Since each action has a different value for this field, TypeScript can infer the action type. For example, if action type is change score, TypeScript can deduce that we have a score action with a score field. Conversely, if action type is set game state, TypeScript knows that the action is a game state action with a game state field. As you can see, adding TypeScript to React is easy, as long as you understand certain TypeScript features. 
But did you know that there are also seven advanced JavaScript features that you need to know to level up your React game? You can find out more in this video. I'll see you there.